And again, if I go too quickly, it's some. Okay, what's the deal on insurance? In many cases, for many years, the uh, MGB was not covered by insurance companies. In the past couple of years, uh, Blue Cross, United Healthcare, and other insurance companies have started paying for the MGB on appeal. So we recommend that you uh, work hard with your insurance company to try and get them to cover the insurance. Uh, we recommend that you battle with them, and the method usually works something like this. You contact them, you say you'd like to discuss uh, coverage for your surgery and if they deny it then you say you want to appeal it and when they appeal you go to the appeal and at the appeal process um, you want to submit the information about the MGB and the new information we'll talk about in a minute suggests the MGB is as good as or better than the other types of weight loss surgery. Uh, with that we have had dozens and dozens of people now get their surgery paid for and so what you have to do is each insurance company makes appeal process complex and difficult because the more difficult and more complex they make it, the less likely you are to get your money from them. No, I know that's really not the reason. I was just kidding for legal, pur <laughs> for legal purposes. Um, so they make it relatively Byzantine method to, and every insurance company is different, but basically it works like this. The insurance company is trying to do the job of paying for what's reasonable and therapeutic and safe for their clients and not paying for patent medicines or quacks or things like that and that makes sense. How they make those decisions can be kind of unclear especially in an area of controversy. One of the things that's, uh, that almost everyone now agrees on is that evidence-based medicine, let me say that again, evidence-based medicine is a critical tool to help you decide what should and should not be paid for. Evidence-based medicine is scientific research where you take patients and study them, ideally prospectively, to see what therapies have good outcomes and bad outcomes. Evidence-based medicine then is published in the scientific literature and reviewed by peers who look at the quality of the science. And after it's published, Evidence-based medicine articles can be classified as level one, two, and three. Level one evidence-based medicine research studies are controlled, randomized, prospective trials. That means people, half of them get a lap band, half get an MGB. Half get a and y and randomly half get an MGB. And in that kind of study, the results are generally viewed as level one evidence. And here's the good news about the MGB. Controlled, prospective, randomized trials of the MGB show it's better, or as good as, or better than the Ru and Y. Controlled, randomized, prospective trials show that the MGB is as good as, or better than, the lap band. Controlled, prospective, randomized trials now show that not only is the MGB better than the sleeve, it's roughly twice as good. So they took in a study of patients who had diabetes, half got a sleeve gastrectomy, half got an MGB. Two years later, about half of the sleeve patients were cured. Almost 100% of the MGB patients were cured, roughly twice as effective. This is called level one evidence because it's randomized, controlled, prospective trial. And that research has just been presented last year and is about to be published. That kind of information then supports your claim with the insurance companies and most insurance companies will support level one evidence. And so send us an email, we'll send you the references to those things, more research is due out. It's very exciting and the MGB is now gaining the support of what we call level one evidence and that's critical in your insurance appeal process.